So good evening, one and all. This side, Ritika Negi, and I'm glad having a great amount of audience in today's webinar on the introduction to retail management, featuring by Dr. Venu Sharma, organized by Diri Shaksham. Diri Shaksham is an initiative of the Sapes Group, which has developed content over 300 courses in multiple languages, which range from four hour to six months in a various sectors of IT, BFSI, retail, and entrepreneurship for all age group from schools, children, uh, youth, professional, and senior citizen too. DG Shaksham has also conducted more than 100 webinars, 10 FTPs, and workshops, six international conferences. DG Shaksham mm -hmm. impacted more than 15,000 lives through various webinars, workshop conferences, seminar across the globe. So the big question is why we choose this topic as a retail management refers to all the processes which help the customers to procure the desired like, merchandise from the retail store for their end use. So for that, we must know what is a retail management. To guide us all through this to topic, we have with us Dr. Venu Sharma, management at Abdilla Institute of Management Technology, include understanding the retail environment along with the customer behavior. She has participated and presenting papers in various conferences at the national and international level. She has authored case studies and research paper, which got published in the Reputative Journals and the Case Center, formerly ECCH, European Case Clearing House. She is also the editorial board of the South Asian Journal of Business Management Cases and a regular viewer of a Reputative International Journals. She has received the Rasmus CS Chore grant in 2021 and one of the team members working on the international project of Rasmus capacity building in the field of higher education on sustainability tourism, a European Union funded project. She is a recipient of a BIM Chag Stark Young uh, Scholar Award 2014, earned a Best Case Award from the Case Center UK 2017. G.D. Sardana Young Scholar Award 2018 and Sage Best Case Award 2019. She has more than 15 years of experience in the industry and academy. Apart from her contribution to the society through teaching and research, she writes regularly on the recent trends in the retail domain. She has also been mentoring and developing students in the area of developing research paper and reports. Now, everyone, with a huge round of applause, please welcome Mrs. Venu Sharma to take off today's event. Please, ma'am. Thank you so much, Ratika. Welcome. So, as, so to start with, first of all, a very good evening from India to all. Those who have joined from outside India, as I can see a huge list of participants, those who are not from India and there must be some other time zone. So very good evening from India and good morning and good afternoon in according to your place. It's really an exciting number seeing that 100 people have already joined the session and there are still few more to join and they, I can see them in the waiting room too. So first of all, a big thanks to Ratika and Atul for supporting me for this event and uh, th thanks goes to Pragya and Vandana also for cooperating with me from past one month so that I can compile this complete uh, presentation and course for uh, uh, all the attendees over here. So as Ritika has already shared about me, my profile has been explained by her to all of you. Very quickly, I would just like to mention that uh, currently I am working with Birla Institute of Management, which is called as BIMTEC, and it is uh, near the location, the capital city of India, which is Delhi. It is in the NCR region. I'm working here from past 10 years as in, with the capacity of assistant professor in marketing and retail area. And I'm also one of the program coordinator of retail management program because BIMTEC offers two years exclusive retail program, uh, which is a residential course. So, and I am the program coordinator for the same. And thus, when you get admitted to uh, such program in BIMTEC, then I am the one who is going to take you to the basics of the retail concepts and the retail marketing aspects. So, uh, not to waste too much of time and let's start with the topic. As when we were discussing earlier which topic to take on, they, uh, we had fixed upon a very basic topic, which is called as introduction of retail management. That what this retail is all about and all. So, when we talk about in this particular thing that what retail is all about today we are here to understand actually that how a retail business works what are the core issues and challenges involved what are the key terms and terminologies associated and an appreciation of Indian retail sector specialty. So when we ask a simple question what is retail business there are a few things which comes to our mind those few things talks about is us is that retail a neighborhood store or it's a bunch of neighborhood store that we see daily is it a fancy mall with the movie theater? Is it a local market where we are getting our veggies? 
or we are getting our non-veg stuff. So looking at all those things, it seems like that retail is a very simple business. So now for this uh, session today, we are here to talk about that being a customer since ages, what is there to be learned more about the retail management program? Why the learning of retail is so important? So I would just like to give a simple quote, which says that retail is a world in itself. It is one of the oldest business if you talk about in terms of any business. Either you being a student or you being a marketer, you have faced different, played different roles, maybe at times as a customer, maybe at times as a marketer. But being a customer, we never realize how this retail is so organized. What has made this retail an organized sector? So looking at that, if we talk about retail from ages to the day retail, which is there today, it has changed a lot. It has come a long way. And the major reason of this particular thing is the modern technology, because these technologies have gifted the retail sector with several advances. And that is why we always are saying that retail is a revolution going through a revolution there is a big change which is coming in retail industry and the re major reason for coming this change is our consumer has changed a lot our consumer is gradually but distinctly changing across multiple dimensions not even the single one what today customer is asking for if you judge yourself also what are the things which you are asking from the brands from the marketers you're asking for convenience you're asking for personalization. You want multi-channel engagement. You want a healthy living. You want a shopping on trend. So these are becoming a very basic expectations of each and every consumer. And especially the generation, which is the millennial generation. They people are asking for all those things. And that is making the retail industry to revive on a daily basis, very quickly. Though whatever trends I have mentioned just today, if you all could feel of, okay, okay, these things are already we are getting. Then what's new retail is going to bring in future? I would like to highlight one thing over here. Though retail industry is working on the convenience aspect, though industry is working on providing the personalization thing to the consumer, but never forget there is a conflict in the evolving preferences also. At the same time, when we are asking for sustainability, uh, convenience, we are also asking for the sustainability aspect. There is a gradual rise of sustainability in millennial generation. When we are asking about the personalization or hyper-personalization, there is a fear of our data and privacy also. So when these both the things are going parallelly and increasing towards, so now it's important to know okay, what retail is there in the future, where we people are talking about, okay, okay, retail is going to take us through. So that is what the retail evolution. Retail evolution, I would like to take it on through. Retail has, evolution has seen the waves of growth over the past decades. And I would like to say two to three decades special, where the first wave was when a new physical world of retail experience through large format, multi-brand stores and exclusive branded stores came in the market. Earlier when there were small stores and suddenly there was a store which is called as your multi-brand outlet or an exclusive brand showroom. That was the first wave, first introduction of retail industry to the consumer. The second thing came when this all thing was triggered by the entry of large players in the food retail in a format which we call it as hypermarket or supermarket. As you all go to Tesco or you all uh, uh, to the Walmart and you find. So these are the formats which come later on. That is your e rise of e-commerce and the foreign brand. So as now when we are entering into this new decade, retail is expected to cross the trillion dollar mark on the back of multiple structural models when we talk of in terms of consumptions and different business models when it is coming to. So what are these things which are constantly making these changes? So these are the five things which I mentioned on the screen. They are the one which are constantly evolving the marketing dynamic. Consumer is shifting. They are changing their behaviors. There is an innovation in supply chain. Data and technologies are disrupting the market. And there is a new form of competition in regulatory, regulatory directions. So when we are seeing customer is changing, what they are asking for everything just in a blink of second. They want convenience in that too. They want quality in that too. They want a convenient price also in that. So consumer behavior expectation is changing a lot. When we talk about supply side innovation, the supply chain has evolved a lot. There is 
when we are saying that we are getting a delivery in a two hours or a prime membership from an Amazon and we are getting the product as early as possible, how these things are happening? These things are just called as direct to consumers. Now people don't want to visit the retailers. They directly want to sell it to the consumers. So in that particular scenario, what is happening is that the retail is evolving. And how it is evolving and what has happened from past to now, very quick overview of the same to you I would like to give. When I'm saying that retail is evolving, there are four waves which I mentioned, 90s, 200s, 2010s, and 2020. When I'm talking about in terms of 2020, uh, 90s, what has exactly happened in, 90, um, in 1990s is that economy opened up, organized players entered into the market. So in 1991, if I talk in Indian, terminal, Indian terms, 1991 was the year when first modern trade store was opened in India. That was a shopper stop in Mumbai. And then in 95, we have seen the exclusive showroom of Adidas and Reebok opened over there. And in the late 90s, like in 97 or 98, we have seen that there was first pantaloon stores from Future Group and first West Side store from the Tata Trend. So this is the time when there was a new world of physical retail. And similarly, when we talk in 20, when we entered into the 2000th year, what we found was in 2000, there was then organized players, those who are giving direct competition to the multi-categories. In 2001, the first hypermarket opened in India. In mid of the 2000, we have seen the first cash and carry store that was a metro store in Bangalore. And then we have seen in 2006 that Reliance entered into this retail industry and became a huge player. So this is how the retail industry is entering into the particular market and trying to get to through the customers then 2010 year was again a big wave because here there was a rise of e-commerce there was a rise of foreign brands in 2010 we have seen zara the first store in delhi in 12 we have seen amazon entering the india in 15 we found h&m has first store in delhi in 2018 we found that walmart has acquired the flipkart and IKEA's first store in Hyderabad was open. And then in 2019, we found the Japanese store Uniqlo first store in India. And 2020 is known to everyone. It is a revolution. It has bought huge things. No one has ever expected what this particular 2020 has ever planned to bring it to. No one has expected these kind of things which 2020 has brought. The reason of this particular huge change was a lot. But there were certain things which were predicted by the retail marketers but something else has has happened so what i would like to highlight over here as what exactly indian retail industry has predicted and what exactly has happened so when we talk about in terms of what it was expected ki, okay uh, what are the things which are going to happen in future we thought that retail profitability is going to improve and it's not going it's not that easy because industry is facing multiple challenges but what has happened? Happened was that sustained profitability model emerged across different categories. So the prediction doesn't go that way, which the way it was thought uh, thought of. Secondly, when we talk about when we have seen the rise of premiumization, that is the multiple retail format. They were expected to drive the scale in returns because they were rising high in number, but happened differently. Indian consumption, Indian uh, uh, consumers are the one who are running towards the value. And that is why value retail clearly win among that. In, in Indian consumer market, I will say in the Indian consumption, value is the core. Then always it was thought that with the emergence of these foreign brands and uh, e-commerce, small and neighborhood stores are going to have a face a huge threat. There's going to be a huge competition, but happen differently. If we look at in Indian scenarios in 2020, which was the pandemic time, small neighborhood stores are the one who continue to be the relevant for, to the every consumers because the people have worked on familiarity proximity and the most important thing that is the monthly credit and they were the huge success then what was product predicted that industry would be having is the hypermarkets are going to gain the prominence and will lead the growth but what happened was e-commerce has grown but it is still believed that there is a long way for the e-commerce to go to reach and all and similarly when as i mentioned earlier also for the supply chain supply chain has actually revised from direct to consumers, farm to folk. These are the things which were expected. 
but there is still some momentum observed in the integration and end to end flows yet to be solved so there are mixed pathways which are playing out there are multiple channels that has unlocked the growth for the retailers and all and when it was said ki okay after pandemic when the stores will open the market will be open consumers are not going to go and do the shopping at store they are conveniently doing shopping online but it and they thought ki uh stores associates are not going to be relevant in that particular category they'll diminish completely because of the use of technology but store associates still are relevant and they are playing the role of experts and the advisors while being in the store so yes they are also playing as a major role in this industry so when we are talking in terms of retail evolution retail has changed from past has seen a huge change has seen a gone through a revolution which i'll say but a thanks to pandemic because every retailer every brand every organization was thinking of to bring this change but they were not so active pandemic acted as a catalyst and they made the retailers to come bring all those changes which consumer is asking and consumer also changed very quickly and adapted all these changes which earlier he was not if i look uh, tell you from an indian perspective consumers here are not confident in doing the online shopping but pandemic had made them to shop online for even from a small toothbrush to a big furniture online and they all are conveniently enjoying it and appreciating the quality and spreading positive word of mouth for the same too <clears throat> so from that particular aspect this is what has already changed now i would very quickly would like to tell you about the <clears throat> retail industry especially from the indian market i was not aware that we are i'm going to have an audience high in uh, <clears throat> outside from india too so thus i have taken only indian example and india's uh, num uh, numbers and figures only pardon me for that so if i talk about indian retail industry there is going to be a new, it's going to emerge as one of the most dynamic and fast paced industries the reason major is that there are huge entry of new players it accounts for uh, over more than 10% of country's gdp and around 8% of the employment also india is the world fifth largest global destination in the retail space and if you see the five, uh, four points which i have uh, mentioned on the screen where i am saying that india has been ranked as the 73 in united nation conference on trade and development b2c market or it is the fifth largest global destination in retail space and has been ranked as 63 in world bank doing business 2020 also india largest global destination in retail space and in fdi confidence index india has been ranked 16th after us canada germany uk china japan france uh, australia switzerland and italy so indian market has a huge potential to grow has a huge uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, opening up of new sectors are bringing not only the uh, ex excellent products for the market marketers so they are also bringing the stuff which we call as in terms of employment for the other uh, fellows too so in what are the reason for the strong growth in indian retail industry if we look at the data also this retail sector in india is emerging as one of the largest sector in the economy because it is contributing as i mentioned earlier also 10% to the gdp and 8% to the employment india is going to become a favorable marketer for the fashion retailers also on the back of a large young adult consumer base which i say that millennials are actually the right consumer for retail industry in these days they are the one who are making these changes possible and even making this ch uh, ch uh, changes survive for a longer period of time too so if we look at back not uh, uh, much few months back only if i talk about october 2021 retailers in india increased by 14% compared with the last year and there were many researches which had confirmed this particular point that how during the pandemic also there was a huge rise in different uh, sectors as you all can see in the graph only this is a uh, research shown by the uh, data which has been released by the ministry of statistics and program implementation that indian consumer price index that we call as the cpi it is based on the retail inflation it has been increased by 6.3% in may from 4.2% in april 2021 and as both have uh, the food and the fuel infl uh, inflation and they had outpassed the expectation of the consumers however this retail inflation is to 5.3% in august 2021 only so since the 
concept of this covid-19 and the pandemic time there was a growing number of if we talk about the india ratings and research that is in indr ra domestic they mentioned that domestic organized food and grocery retailers are expected to increase in coming years that is we called as in the financial year 2020-22 if i talk about in the financial year 2021 which has happened there were when i, uh, I just mentioned previously that indian consumers are not comfortable in doing the online shopping they have a fear of making the online payments in making online stuff so what has happened in that financial year 21 has seen the digital transactions has increased the total non cash retail payment and has increased in terms of volume in fact uh, in the andhra pradesh government here in india has announced retail parks policy 2126 which talks about anticipating the targeted retail investment of around 5000 crore in next 5 years similarly there was a platform uh, darwin platform group of uh, uh, companies they have also entered into the retail space with the launch of its first mega store in mumbai as well as the company is also opening up other self owned exclusive stores at different locations in mumbai also so retail when they are saying ki okay has faced challenges has faced the breakdown has seen the slow down period also the financial year 2021 has brought huge things into the retail picture which has opened up the marketers for marketers and even for the investors to come and join this particular industry if we talk about reliance they have announced a plan to launch 711 convenience stores in india the realme brand has launched 100 new exclusive stores across india to expand and strengthen its footprint in the country similarly the reliance retail they people have also um, introduced the fresh pick a new experiential gourmet food store in india to expand its grocery segment in the ultra premium category so in uh, looking at all those things and uh, whatever the unprecedented decline which has happened in 2020 quarter the 2021 financial year has brought huge happiness in the retail sector too and is india is expected to become the world's third largest consumer economy by reaching to 400 billion us dollar in the consumption by 2025 and this is the increasing participation because of the foreign brands and the private players because they have given a boost to the indian retail industry india's price competitiveness has attracted the large retail players to use its source base and global retailers like your gap tesco jc penny walmart they people are increasing their sources sourcing from india and are moving from third party buying offices to establishing their own wholly own wholly managed sourcing and buying offices in india and thus the government of india has also introduced reforms which talk about uh, your uh, um, things which are attracting the foreign direct investments in the industry as we all know that government in india has approved 51% in fdi in multi brand retail and 100% fdi in single brand retail under the automatic route which is expected to give a boost to the ease of doing business and make in india scheme with plans to allow 100% fdi in e-commerce and all so looking at all those things where we are saying that india is becoming a favorable market for many retailers and especially for the fashion retailers just because of the many millennials and especially when we talk in terms of fintech and the finances there are many fintech companies are competing for their presence in the local stores if we talk about the brands like paytm they have announced a 1 billion dollar loyalty program uh, and ledger services for the kirana stores in india in 2020 when there was a sudden uh, lockdown happened then there are many other fintech companies which also came by pay nearby phone pay bharat pay they all have introduced different services for small shop owners enabling better digital payment and delivery options at these stores so if we talk about amazon the one of the famous brand they have also partnered with the local stores to provide a platform for many small shops and merchants on its amazon marketplace and walmart has its own network of 28 best price stores which is serving the local stores across the country and one of the popular name which is the flipkart wholesale a digital b2b marketplace they have also announced the uh, strengthening of its commitment when we talk about the growth and prosperity of kirana and smes by boosting the supply chain infrastructure 
and providing the employment opportunities also so if we talk i talk about recent news news and all which has happened which we have seen here in the recent prominent newspapers we have seen that in 2022 only there was a uh, over 7 dollar billion raised by indian startups in quarter 4 of 2021 and it is expected that uh, this is the data as per the report by the nascom and pasex global similarly we have seen that walmart is also inviting select indian sellers indian sellers to um, apply to join walmart marketplace and gain access to over 120 million monthly us shop and when we know that all these changes are happening it's right to say that the retail has evolved but the point is how much it has evolved from past to present so if we talk about in terms of past to present there are three things which we cannot ignore when we talk in terms of uh, retailing the first is the shopping experience the second is the marketing and third is payment these are the three things around which the retail industry revolves the shopping experience talks about the kind of experience which the consumer is getting if i talk about past how it, ha- it ha- used to happen retail as an organized industry actually has begun in 18th and the 19th centuries when there were specialty shops or there are departmental stores only then there is an opportunity of catalogs coming to the market and then there was an Im- I- invention of telephone empowered quicker impulse shopping and then customers call on the uh, orders by looking at the catalogs and all presently what is happening cross channel marketing is happening starting from 1990s when computer stores allowed consumers to view and purchase items online online this was seen as a risky and an even green concept but online retail has now developed into a vital channel e-commerce has grown in early 2000 but customer has not adopted in that way the way the people had adopted in, in the same technology in 2020 people are able to use mobile phone to complete their transactions in the moment when they are inspired to make purchases earlier they have a fear for that and with the product informations and reviews now available online the attitude of the consumer has have morphed dramatically no longer dependent on sales people no longer they want to look at the catalog writers for the information consumers know that how much they want to know about the product about the quality about the features they don't want to know from the sales people they go and check browse their product to the multiple channels what they want is a cross channel that the wherever we browse we people will be able to buy we have seen in the laptop we should be able to buy it through mobile phone we have seen the product in the mobile phone we should be able to order it at the uh, on a over a phone call we have ordered it through online we should be allowed to go and return into the store when we found that the product is not worth so these all are the things which con- today's consumer is looking forward for the con- uh, uh, your shopping experience and here where the future lies the future lies in omni channel aspect one challenge for online retailer is going to be always is that the visual experience of buying the product online they cannot provide because retail is a sensory driven organization we people see touch feel buy return all these products this is a sensory business so nowadays what consumer is re- expecting if we can't see and we can't touch the product online we should see the 360 degree views of the product we should know how the product would be felt like if we when it will be received so this is the another level of disruption which technology is going to bring into the retail world by providing an omni channel experience to the consumers by serving his senses as well as the with the product quality right price delivery at the right location and at the right time so in retail it is very commonly said that when you talk about what is retail is the retail is delivering of a right product to the right consumer at the right time at the right location so here lies a, here is the successful retail so this is a kind of a shopping experience which a retailer is looking at what is the another experience which retailer is looking at in terms of the marketing if i talk about past how marketing used to happen it used to happen through signages it used to happen through packaging that is the only true differentiator that could only inform the con- customers about its quality about its style of the product when i was saying about the catalogs or the traveling sale persons they people used to raise the profile of their product by introducing the concept of celebs marketing that is a celebrity they are endorsing your product and then marketer says that we always endorse the product with their four p's product price place and promotions and then they sell the products 
to a focus groups to after understanding the demographic aspect of that particular consumers only billboards ads magazines radios social media these all are the things through which consumers get drive through and get to know about the product these are the marketing techniques only but presently what is marketing what is there in retail it is all about data it is data driven segmentation big data is driving these changes in the way retailers are marketing it to the consumers today the union of purchasing data with customer preference information from the uh, crm software search data demographics their location they are enabling the retailers to break down the large customer profile into the sem- uh, smaller segment and into such a smaller segment that you know each and every consumer one by one so when we talk of omni channel strategy marketing talks about okay, okay know your customer as much as you can and there where the future of the retail lies rather than making the segmentation for whole a uh, smaller groups and all make the segmentation of one the future segment of the future is the segment of one that is where we call it as true personalization that is the next step in the evolution of retail marketing and they can be targeted not only because of their profile or because of their loyalty data or because of their purchase history but everything in compile they know what their precise location is they know uh what kind of product is they know when the product is needed by back again they know if we can introduce a subscription model what will be the interest of my consumer uh to buy that product so in future lies for the marketing aspect is to do the marketing one to one not on a smaller groups of customers uh, customers what is there in terms of retailing um evolution there are three things which one has to look upon the shopping experience the marketing and the payment methods so we have already talked about the shopping experience and the marketing aspects query quickly i'll jump towards the payment method which talks about ki how payment is going to earlier what used to happen credit cards or cash that is the what where uh, sorry cash and check where the consumer used to work then present scenario talks about the credit card and the online payment methods through various uh, qr code scanning and then delivering the product then buying the product where the future lies is future lies for the retail payments in cutting edge of the digital disruption where we talk about in terms of either the blockchain that is expected to have a growing role in retail payments or when we talk about cryptocurrency because there are various researches those who have shown there the future lies somewhere in the cashless transaction one of the popular uh, research by accenture the people had mentioned that around 64% of north american consumers are planning to use a mobile wallet in 2020 and there was a 39% rise in the user base in 3 years only so they looking at all that confidence which the millennial generation is having and the tech savvy the people are there is a expectation of coming up of cryptocurrency or the uh, blockchain concept and for the payment method in the retail industry too. so when we have already know okay the industry has changed so much and uh, from past to present and the future expectation is also somewhat different what is exactly the future of retail is going to be so i crossed down it into 3 years in 21 what has happened by 25 what will happen and by 2030 what in retail industry we can first and the foremost thing is it's all thanks to the technology the technology has brought this particular change possible in retail industry if we talk about four hours of customer centric business model the first is recognize second is remember third is recommend and fourth is reward now what is this when we talk about in terms of recognize recognize what recognize me as a regardless of my entry point and device whenever i enter i enter through mobile phone i enter through laptop i enter through palm top i enter through any of the source any of the network you should be able to recognize me regardless of my entry point then remember my history of interactions with you that is what customer centric business models are talking about you have to remember what my history interactions were you what previously i had worked with you or previously orders i had what are the challenges i faced why i completed the order why i didn't why i didn't complete the order the third is the recommendation that you should be able to re- recommend relevant products and services to me and the last art talks about the reward the reward you should reward me for my loyalty because because of the same we can bridge the gap between the physical and the digital world retailers have to rise the challenge of harnessing in technology advancement so that they can enhance the customer experience and what exactly in 21 25 we are going to see we have seen that in 2021 
after the pandemic and lockdown also there was a return of a physical stores where which earlier we were thinking of physical stores consumer will not come back consumers are coming back to the uh, physical stores as well as the personalized offers also we have seen even um, in the old days people visited the local shopkeepers who knew them by name and could predict their needs based on what they wanted through a personal relationship it was always there but in this data driven algorithm market market there is a need to drive this hyper personalized offer and services to the retailers and 21 is going to be the point to the future when retailers will do shopping for you you are not doing shopping for yourself and even we have seen that in late 21 the data is has been proven to be the integral way of business hearing the voice of consumer understanding their expectation so in 2025 what is going to happen the experience is going to be blended because 2020s was a year which was a decade of disruption covid 19 was just the curtain opener in 25 what will be happening that we will be still experiencing the tail end of the pandemic in terms of its impact and hybrid working models reduced business travel commercial buildings at lower occupancy these all things are going to happen so future retail trends will see the retail theater will develop by this particular time by this middle of 2020s to 2030 there would going to be a conventional retail model of just hanging rows and rows of clothes on the hangers and supplying a couple of changing room and a mirror will be on the way, way out so that is what the expectation that okay retail experience is going to provide in 2025 and customer expectations are going to rule the world in lockdown we all have seen that retailers have recognized the need to connect online consumers within the store staff and has also become more of an opportunity to differentiate and develop the customer loyalty through their superior services so this is what it's going to happen when retailers will tap the local communities will develop the hyper personalization hyper localization to attract these customers with a suitable offers the trend towards hyper personalization could see more retailers deliver a white glove service in the digital way to meet this uh, rising uh, expectation of the consumers and 2030 it is going to be a smart year it's going to be a smart supply chains applying ai to predict the demand they are going to calculate the supply they are going to know what is the direct benefit of this to the environment to my consumers stores are going to run by people who would gauge how e- much each of these product they need today there are deeply integrated system those who are managing the stock replenishment but these systems results in huge amount of waste so mountains of foods and clothing are going to be destroyed each year due to the difficulty of predicting what consumer will want and when so it is going to be entirely solved and the most importantly is the seamless shopping is going to happen seamless shopping in terms of that consumer will have that experience through social platforms shrinking waiting time for customer service queries with smart chatbots they all are going to bring post high personalized experience through user generated con- content brands have to enable customers to move from offline to online by providing a personalized experience it's always a very famous quote uh, uh, i forgot the name of the person those who has said that social commerce can combine the personal touch consumers used to find in a store with the convenience of an online purchase so this is what is expected is going to happen in a coming year when we talk about in terms of uh, your uh, future of the retail is going to happen so when we say ki okay future of retail is going to happen one thing please note it's a consumer commerce now it is no more a retail it is what re- consumer want and that is what there is a transition from retail to the consumer commerce this is happening there is a disruption there is a change in business model and partnership the customer expectations are changing the people are moving from b to c to c to b model now it's not a push strategy it's now a pull strategy there is no business to consumer is consumer to business model nowadays which is industry is seeing is there is a reduced cost of doing businesses when we talk of this thing uh, it means that with retail margin those who are under increasing pressures and cost increasing across multiple aspects of value chain it is the most recognized conventional form of cost cut and what is the purpose that is what customer today wants to know customer wants business to stand for something bigger than their product they are selling so that is what the recent pandemic has only sharpened up the consumer preferences for purpose driven organization where we say ki okay sustainability comes the aspect so if you want to survive in future there are few things which you have to note it down your business should be platform 
based business by this i mean that you are targeting both b2b and b2c offering you sh one has to be multinational retailers because they will transform themselves into the platform through m and uh, mergers and uh, acquisitions the ca they, the capabilities which they have you have to be a national hero because you are going to get an advantage of securing a loyal consumers you should know how to be a value based retailers the direct to consumers business are going to rock in a coming time and even the category specialist when we talk in terms of offering unique and focused products and services the people are going to define what consumer wants and the independent con retailers when we talk of mutuals and independents they have the unique ability to directly gather and respond to the changing community so this is what in future the retail is going to all about the rest coming three screens actually talk about the future retail trends which talk about i'll very quickly and precisely talk about uh, all of them the first thing which uh, we are talking in terms of the future of retail we see is the first and the foremost thing is the consumer shift uh, change in the consumer behavior that we all have seen we all have known to that it looks like that uh, senior brands even in i'd say the very old brands in us are also becoming the savior shoppers that is one of the statement by forbes uh, in one of their research they say that demand for smart home devices and assistive technologies and anticipated to go up but the big brands are avoiding going to these kind of strategies some are even thinking about spending their savings now so consumer beha behavior is changing in such a way that it is hard to predict consumers are shifting their behavior in the light of pandemic online grocery sales are climbing and seniors are becoming the saviors and are purchasing goods online and the second thing which is happening is in store shopping experience have been modified completely if you look at the screen the number given 48% 61% and 70% these are 48% are the retailers who expect the demand to improve in coming years 61% are the consumers those who continue to rely on the physical stores and 70% are the holiday consumers who felt safe and shopping so what is happening in terms of in store shopping experience though more shoppers are going online there are still consumers who rely on brick and mortar stores for their needs Shop consumers want to go to the physical stores but need to feel safe retail businesses can re redesign their spaces to improve the shopper experience post pandemic also the next is when we talk about the private labels it's a huge rise of private labels and the biggest reason is that uh, of uh, retailers are going in house in the last few years is because they earn an average of 25% or more if we compare this to a typical your gross profit they'll get a typical grocery item and it's easy to see why private labels have become more means so private labels are increasing almost two or three consumers think that private labels are great value for money and that is why these are selling three times as much the branded products private label market share is expected even to rise in the coming 10 years thanks again to the millennial generation and their shopping habits the fourth one talks about the deep retail deep retail is talking about the data the data and our browsing history because it is explaining our habit to the marketers ki what is going to happen so when we talk in terms of uh, uh, application when we say 2d 3d computer vision natural language processing ar vr use of ai this is all are going to be the contributor to this development of customer to manufacturing business model and they people are these technologies are going to bring the revenues <clears throat> even accounting for the effects of pandemic too so ai is also at the forefront of a, a consumer to manufacturing business model next is your voice search and personal assistance which is again on a rise and similarly the slide doesn't change yeah okay and similarly is the insta shopping very much prominent these days that instagram is one of the first social media network to experiment with a native payment state that how you people are working with how much successful your brand is going to be in the market and next the most important one is the omni channel which is the reality omni channel is a reality of future if in 2019 i talk about omni channel so at that moment it was only the banded around in the retail circle it is simply because it's the future of retail industry as already mentioned that consumers no lo longer distinguish between online and offline shopping they may start shopping in one and check out in e either so this is what consumer is looking forward in a future and this is what when we say for example if i say that um, uh, ar can be used to preview the items before actually buying them this makes ar especially useful for the furniture clothing 
all those things so consumer demand the same experience and information they need whatever channel they use so from that particular aspect and the last takeaway is experience economy experience economy which talks about brand as a culture big retailers your ikea your nike they all are exp- experimenting with small small format or they call it as concept stores these stores are offering limited stock of items but are providing pertinent services or exact content to the consumers and again millennials are the one who are driving the force behind these changes but they are only the spearhead of evolving consumer behavior across all contemporary generations so w- w- uh, when in terms of we call it as experience economy this is going to relate it to the outpacing every other form of uh, uh, expenses which uh, happen in the retail industry and the fear of missing out which we call as fomo is a by product of this experience economy so um, very quickly i would just like to tell upon the last uh, uh, this is the last slide where we are going to talk about the strategies adapted by the retailers strong distribution and logistic networks expansion omni channel retailing direct to consumer retail strategies these all things are mentioned and somehow have been told by me during the session also as an example and if we can have very quickly uh, any questions if ritika people have in the chat box and all messages in the chat box so first question is how can we implement retail management to new generation should it affect the whole process of the company uh, how should we implement retail to new generation that is yes, what they mentioned retail new management gen- to the new generation okay as i said ki there is a huge scope of when we talk in terms of uh, knowing retail and retail industry is growing so much and majority of the time i'm i have repeated this particular aspect that retail industry is driven by the millennials nowadays and now when we talk of okay what is this new generation of retail it is actually the innovative users of retail when we talk of uh, we are saying um, ai in retail or we are saying the recommendation in engines or we are talking about the personalization virtual ass- assistance or the supply chain management this is all the new retail new generation of retail which is coming in the market these all are the innovative users of something when we i'm saying retargeting what is retargeting it is allowing the retail brands to reconnect with the previous consumer who have visited their website maybe seen or placed into their basket or something and one of the benefit of this strategy is that it can be highly personalized so the future of retail somewhere lies for lies in and around the millennials as well as um, this new generation retail concept because the people are the well judged they know how to uh, make the right engagement that is we call as the timing the engagement they know how to predict the content performance they know how to manage the campaigns and all so that is that would be my say on that so there is another question how the constant improvement of retailing business model affect the franchisee company okay so uh, with reference to that i would like to say that franchisee business is also one of the part of retail industry when we t- say ki okay uh, what a franchisee is a franchisee is actually one such business the answer is franchisee business why because it is one of the primary channel through which international businesses and brands have gained strength in the indian market the process involves that there is a franchisor who provides a franchisee with the conceptual structural or legal or training related support and all so the profit of owning and selling a franchisee go both the ways the franchisor and franchisee both reap the benefits once the franchisee gets access to the brand's loyal consumer base they can provide uh, a creative support legal counseling training support and the franchisor can further expand their business in an untapped market thereby increasing the market share and the revenue so franchising is going to be the most profitable and feasible form of business opportunity one just needs to know how to obtain a franchise so you can easily start a franchise then yeah and another question is is omni channel merchandising same as the cross merchandising no there is a difference in terms of when we talk in terms of multi channel and cross channel that is a major difference when we talk in terms of multi channel multi channel say that a product is available at different platforms at four different platform it's at the store it's online it's over the call but they all are not well connected to each other so similarly is the but another aspect is a cross channel when we talk about cross channel when these all are interconnected to each others if i'm ordering 
through online and why want to return i go back in the store and return the product if i have bought this product in the store i should have an opportunity to return it into the um, um uh, online platforms also after saying ki, okay this is a pickup point from here you can come and pick up the product and then take it back so these are the concepts difference in multi channel and cross channel when we talk about on channel omni channel merchandising always remember that mer omni channel merchandising refers to creating a unified customer experience across all possible touch points of the consumer journey so when multi channel and cross channel are not same omni channel merchandising is also not going to work in a same way for both the channels because for retailers with physical and digital stores omni channel merchandise is going to involve or create a seamless customer experience even if the customer moves from one to the another but which is much more possible in cross channel rather than multi channel okay and another question is in your opinion ma'am as a consumer which do you prefer online retail or offline retail it depends upon the kind of merchandise i am going to buy honestly i'm telling at times it until and unless nowadays if i'm seeing the future somewhere lies in looking at a product which is uh, which can be pro which pro is providing me 360 degree view and then i am feeling confident of buying that particular product too but it to uh, ask for the investment i am going to make in that product if in fmcg goods category i am ready to take a chance of buying a wrong product also but in buying an suv car i am not going to buy take a risk of buying it online because it asks for huge investment it's a in high involve involvement goods category so in preference of online and offline it depends upon the product category which is low involvement or high involvement as a personal uh, of my interest i'll go uh for a sm uh, low involvement goods to the um, online but for high involvement goods to the offline priya yeah, ratika okay uh, i think one more question is there yeah is uh, employee training is a bit expensive as you know but is there any benefit in the retail management uh okay so yes employee training is uh, very uh, expensive of, uh, in any of the organizations too but when we talk in terms of retail industry too if i say as in the starting i mentioned that i am a program coordinator of retail management program here in our course we also provide one such feature which is called as on job training we send the students for a one month complete one month to the store to learn how a store works know the in and out of a store how a merchandise is uh, asked from the buyer and when it reaches to the store what are the operational aspects which a retailer or a store manager considers so we make them work in that way similarly in retail industry also there are various brands those who are having uh, multiple employment uh, engagement programs or motivational uh, things or rewards and awards they are providing to the uh, their employees so in terms of yes where we say train providing training is an is a, an expensive uh, scenario but it is as required to so it is going to contribute to the retail numbers uh, to the numbers of a retail sales of that particular store so every organization go for these employment training uh, uh, aspects too though in person i am not much aware of the kind of program organizations but there are many mdps uh, management development programs which retail industries also organize for their employees okay i think ma'am this is all from our side okay so so before me we move on to ninth of the today's webinar ma'am anything else you want to touch on any blessing or advice and uh, the advice would be that this particular industry has a huge scope and there are lots to learn in this industry the only challenge which i have seen that people face in this industry is they say it's not an office job where we are not getting a dedicated office space to sit relax and enjoy a tiffin and snacks also at times with the employees but this industry is very creative one there are there is a huge opportunity so um, and where i'm saying that uh, when the pandemic came covid 19 came it acted as a catalyst and has taken this industry to an another level opening a huge market base for the upcoming entrepreneurs or the startups people to enter into this industry thank you very much ma'am i thank you from bottom of my heart for taking time from your busy schedule to be the part of great speaker at our webinar and your presence and voice would help magnify our cause in the best possible way also tag us on instagram like hashtag busy shaksham along with your screenshot in your story you will get your e certificate within 5 working days okay so an individual has not started living until he rises above the confines of 
his indi individualistic concerns to the broader concern of all humanity. With this, I would like to end this webinar. Thank you for attending today's web meeting. And we encourage you to connect with us on the social media. If you have an additional question, you can contact us by email or telephone. We are happy to provide additional support. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Ratika. Thank you, ma'am. So may I take the leave now? Yeah, sure. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you all. It's nice seeing you at the end with a lovely smile on your faces. So bye-bye. Bye-bye, ma'am.